What's going on guys? Today I'm going to go over how to prevent fouling in your throws. But first, last night was the NCAA Basketball Championships and Virginia won. So here's a little 45 second montage of the city going nuts last night. It was so fun. End of a fabulous tournament. Rebound into the hands of Hunter. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. And they stay there. Won't stop now. Woo! Keep your hands up, get them in the sky for the homies that ain't making them. My folks locked down. Woo! I never went nowhere. Woo! What they say in loot is back. Yeah. Blame it on that conjure. The hood call it loot a yak. Welcome back to another episode of JY Throws. Today I want to go over fouling in the circle and some things that you can do to help yourself stay in and keep that big throw. I get asked quite a few questions about taping my wrist and fingers, so I wanted to take a second to cover that. I did a video on taping your wrist, you can check that out, but essentially that's just to stabilize everything. And I don't always tape my fingers, but right now I'm trying to work on a big technical change that involves the shot put being higher up in my fingers, so there's more risk of the shot put slipping off of them. So by taping them up, it helps them be a bit more firm and rigid, that I feel like helps my fingers feel stronger right now in the beginning stages of trying to fix my hand position but it also changes up the feeling of the shot put in my hand. And when trying to make technical changes, sometimes something as simple as taping your fingers can give you a different enough feeling with the implement that now it feels like a different throw so you can focus on positions. But I just want to cover, there's no secret reason that I'm taping them or anything special. It's just to help them feel a bit more firm and change things up so I can make technical changes. So the first thing I want to discuss about fouling is the actual solution to your problems and what you can do so that you never foul again. And that's to get efficient, balanced technique and unfortunately, there's no shortcut to that. The only way to get there is through thousands of throws, working on good positions. But I want to discuss a few things so that you understand positions better, so that you can correct your own technique and actually fix positions. The first thing to pay attention to is how your center of mass tracks across the circle. You want this to be traveling as straight as possible and have your body as balanced as possible by maintaining a vertical posture and keeping a nice wide base so that your weight's centered and that'll be the first helpful thing to get you to stop fouling. And I wanna go over a couple common problems that you may see in your throw, preventing you from having your center of mass travel nice and straight across the ring. One of the biggest things is the hips dropping back into the circle, rather than setting up a nice vertical rotational axis around your leg out of the back. And if you look here, this is my hip dropping back into the circle as my first move, rather than getting over my right side, setting up an axis of rotation. So by setting up the back with a nice rotational axis around your leg, will help you take up less space in the ring throughout your throw, helping you stop fouling. The other thing dropping your hips back does is that now to travel across the circle, it's much harder to just go nice and straight. So you end up coming around too far and then your center of mass is tracking sideways. And that's when you start to pull off and fall off balance and fall out of the circle. So being patient and setting up the back is one of the most important things that will help you stop fouling. The next thing to be really cautious of is not diving to the middle. This is where you don't let your hips clear all the way through and lead you to the middle of the throw and you end up initiating the movement to the middle of the circle with your chest. So you're bent forward and from there it's really hard to finish the throw and be balanced. You want to hit a nice vertical posture in the middle so you can rotate the implement around that axis and you can't get that with your waist bent and your chest way forward. So a good drill to help this is coming out of the back, jumping to the middle and trying to land nice and vertical and stopping. You want to keep your chest facing forward and just come around nice and balanced with your foot underneath you and your hips over top of that and your chest over top of your hips and foot and you're just stopping nice and balanced and upright in the middle. This is a good way to teach you patience to let your hips come all the way through and lead you to the middle of the throw rather than diving into the middle with your chest. Another major position to work on is that balanced vertical posture in the middle that I was talking about before with the implement rotating around you. If you start to pull off with your shoulders, that's going to start to send your center of mass out of the ring. So focusing on a vertical posture, the implement working around you will help you direct your throw, will help you get further throws, and will help you stay in the ring. 
So the last thing that you should be thinking about, but also a very important thing if you need it, and this can be used as a band-aid even if you're off balance and having a rough day, is just getting a powerful block to drive you vertically in the ring. If you're off balance and have a lot of linear movement across the circle, then sometimes really focusing on a hard block and driving straight up will take your linear momentum and transfer that into vertical momentum, helping you save a throw. And again, this is one of the last things you should think of. And if you're not staying in the ring on the finish, it means there's probably another problem happening much earlier in the throw. So that's why I want to break down the other things first so that you understand what causes you to foul. So I wanted to take a second to discuss my fouls in practice. And if you guys have watched my throws, you'll see that after a throw, sometimes I'll kind of hop around and step outside of the ring. And a lot of this is because I was off balance in the first place on that throw. And in practice, there's no need for me to save that throw because it might cause an injury trying to pull my leg back in or jumping around. But I've also done hours of drills and thousands of throws thinking about saving my throws and how to save them and feeling positions. So I understand I was off balance and it's just practice so it's not worth saving. But if you're new to throwing, I would recommend testing out these tips and learning to feel the things that will help you save a throw. Because again, there's no substitution for just getting out and actually doing it. I can explain these positions all day, and until you go out and start to feel what they feel like and practice them consistently, then it's gonna be hard for you to go into a meet and when you're having a bad day to actually make a change. So you need to practice it, and if you're severely off balance on a throw, maybe it's not worth saving. But for the most part, as you're learning, try to save throws because they're gonna to be tools in your tool belt of throwing that you're gonna need someday. When you get to competition and it's feeling weird, you've gotta know how to make an adjustment and pull out a safe throw at 80%, keeping it in the ring to make finals or whatever it is. But that's it for this voiceover stuff. Let's get into practice. All right, I'm gonna start off today with some easy non-reverse folds, trying to feel my balance, get my feet to a good position so that my center of mass is lined up in the middle of the ring. I can get a nice straight push. Ideally, if I'm nice and perfectly balanced, I'll stick it on my feet. But if I start to fall all over the place, I'll start to see what direction my center of mass is moving or what way my arms are pulling. Elbow up, and straight push. All right, I'm gonna try to go into controlled reverses. My thought for these is getting the reverse, pushing everything into the throw, and just switching my feet, trying to stick the finish. So I wanna keep the same nice slow tempo. The exchange is a great way to find your balance on the reverse. Very hard to stick the finish and just land in that, that position without over rotating or turning off of it. Shows you where your center of mass is at and what direction it's traveling if it wants to make you pull out of the circle or fall over. So for discus, one of the most helpful things to not foul is making sure again that everything's lined up nice and balanced in the center. But now you need to wait for the disc to come around and finish it nice and balanced with your shoulders level. Tendency is to want to leave the disc back and start to pull with your off arm. That keeps the disc behind and then it's hard to finish down the middle. So you want to make sure the disc is with your shoulder and rotating around with you, not getting left behind. It's going to help you find the balance on the finish so you can rotate and keep everything in the circle. today is to establish a nice axis of rotation over top of this right side running up through here. Get to the middle nice and vertically so that I can be in a nice balanced position to work the disc around nice and level on the finish. Yeah, it still feels just 
here. So discus has been weirdly hit or miss lately. Some days I'm really feeling it and can really time up the finish. And other days I'm just rushing a bit too much and I can see that I'm not finishing up the kinetic chain and snapping the discus out at the right point. It's kind of coming out early. This is something I'm gonna continue to work. My techniques just changed so much over the last couple months that I haven't had time to get it nice and consistent. I just wanted to point that out because looking back at this, I saw quite a few throws that were just flat or coming out early that I wasn't timing up, getting the extension with my legs and snapping everything through on the finish. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Things are feeling awesome technically. Really pleased how I'm moving through the ring. Feels like my feet are getting to a good position and I'm pretty balanced. The biggest thing for shot put now is I just need to continue to strengthen my wrist. I'll do that by throwing lots and working on the weight room, doing some rehab exercises and things like that. And for discus, I got a gnarly blister going on my finger right now. So that's a little bit painful, throwing things off. I'm not trying to make excuses or anything. I'm super pleased how things are going. So I'm just gonna continue to work every day, keep grinding, and I cannot wait for what's to come this year. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And if you really enjoyed it, subscribe for more. I will see you in the next one.